Let's talk about then a uh, the FTSE 100's worst performing stock of the week, which is Rentacle, which is down about 20%, and pretty much all of that happened in a day, uh, to be honest. So user XEF322 um, went back, I think, and revisited our previous um, piece on this, where I was kind of uh, roughly giving a kind of overview of the thing, to be honest, and, and the sort of push and pull and, and what the business dynamics looked like in a very general uh, kind of way, without much attention to what I've been going on recently, although I said a little bit that will be relevant here, um, and asked whether it's still a buy uh, at these kind of um, levels, and given the latest news, which we'll, which we'll talk about now, uh, I guess. The stock is currently close to its COVID lows. It's not quite at its COVID lows, but it is um, pretty well down. They issued a trading update, um, and to be honest, it wasn't a particularly encouraging uh, trading update. It was a profits warning, effectively, in disguise. Um, and the thing with profits warnings, much like pest infestations, is there's really only one of them. Uh, and this is uh, Rentacle's second in about the space of a year. There was one last October. The thing that's been kind of causing all of these is issues around the kind of integration of uh, Terminix, which is a US former competitor now part of its business. The rough idea from Rentacle was that we would go and buy this business and that would effectively increase our kind of concentration in the US. We want a big concentration in the US because that's where about 60% of global uh, pest control calls come from. Um, and the more we can get round with a bigger presence there, uh, the better our margins become, theoretically, because we don't have to run great distances between uh, these things. So we want to corner as much of that market as we can. So far, so sound thinking. Uh, but the news is that pre-tax profits for this year are likely to be down, uh, to be around £700 million, uh, in pounds, that is. Um, that would be £66 million lower than last year when they came in at 76, uh, 766 sorry, uh, million. Assuming things stay the same in terms of post-tax margins and share count and so on and so forth, which um, they may not, but I was trying to convert this to an earnings per share uh, number. That implies a kind of PE of around, uh, I think, 21 or so. Uh, sorry, not PE. Uh, PE of around 18, EPS of around 21 uh, or so, which is, I don't know, depends what you think. If you think this is a company that is um, struggling to digest a big merger that will work out eventually, um, then that's quite cheap. Uh, and I'll come back to why it might look quite cheap again in a moment, because I'm on the side that says it is, by the way. Um if you think this is a another one of those cases where you have a large merger that didn't work and is going to sink both companies as a result, uh, you might think for comparison, and this is not the only one to compare it to by any means, the sort of Teladoc Livongo thing, a uh, large merger that ultimately then ended up, the combined thing ended up being less than either of the two individually. Um, if you think it's that type of thing, you won't think this is cheap at all. Uh, you'll think this is incredibly expensive. Anyway, here's what's been kind of going on. Um, as is sort of fairly obvious, but I didn't mention in the uh, last um, uh, show we talked about this, pest control is highly seasonal. Uh, so flying, stinging, bitey uh, things tend to show up more in the summer than they do in the winter. Uh, and that's not news to rent a kill on the pest control business. However, they are reporting on what has been their peak season for the last sort of um, four to six months or so. Um, and they appear to have made an absolute mess of it, is the, the long and the short of this. So um, they have been basically overstaffed and under-demanded, and that leads to higher costs, and that means lower margins. Um, organic revenue growth from the states, which is where they've been trying to expand that footprint, come in at about 1% after some, admittedly after some foreign exchange headwinds. That doesn't help, but 1% uh, organic growth is not what you piled all that debt onto your balance sheet for. Uh, equally, they've been finding that they took on more staff and uh, increased kind of weekend hours to try and service a load of demand that essentially never um, really kind of uh, emerged. And perhaps the most worrying thing is the company seems to be a bit of a loss as to why. Um, and that's uh, the bit that might kind of worry you going forward. From my perspective, I can probably live with the idea that, look, you had a bad year. Uh, and as a result, integration is going to come in um, or integration savings are going to come in a lot later than expected. We're looking for um, that to start making its way through. But a story has kind of been later and later and later uh, at this point, And we're going into the not peak uh, part of the year um, with things looking much, much weaker. 
Um, here's why I said I thought this thing might look uh, cheap, at least by some standards anyway. Uh, the nearest competitor is Rollins, um, or a company called Rollins. They're uh, over in the States as well. Rollins has a market cap of about twice Rent-A-Kills. Um, Rent-A-Kill does about twice as much in sales, and they do similar amounts in income. So you have Rent-A-Kill at a PE of about 25 going backwards, 18 going forwards. Rollins at a PE of about 52 going back, 45 going forwards. That has some kind of short-term traders worrying about Rollins uh, going forward and thinking that's going to look like a big number if the uh, demand issue that Rent-A-Kill has identified is actually there, rather than them just making a mess of this. But that's quite a stark difference in valuation here. And I'm not saying it's, I mean, I do think Rollins is overvalued there, by the way. So it's not the case that I'm expecting uh, a straightforward PE multiple expansion rent kill doubles from here. Uh, I don't think that's as, as simple as that at all. But I do think there's kind of decent value in this, to be honest, because I mean, the basic kind of long term thesis I had on this was. Uh, business success comes down to two things, supply and demand. What's going to happen to demand in the future? What's going to happen to supply in the future? And I don't think over the long term demand is going to fall away, uh, particularly. I think um, global warming, stuff like that is going to lead to better breeding conditions for pests. And and in fact, just general raising of living standards is going to cause people to be more interested in pest control services. I think it's relatively um, acyclical, uh, even if it's highly seasonal. Uh, on the supply, so demand looks positive. I think this market will grow. On the supply side, I'm not sure I see much more kind of coming online. The question is whether they can uh, avoid shooting themselves in the foot by, as someone put it, larding on a load of extra costs that they don't need. Um, that's the bit they will need to work out. Uh, it's fairly clear this has not been a good summer for them. Um, but I think I would still be sort of fairly confident in what is an experienced management team uh, here and and. As much as I am surprised they have not done a better job of this, I would be inclined to give them the benefit of the doubt. And a lot of the reason for that is because I think the stock is currently priced in a way that says, no, they aren't going to get this right. I think the kind of risk reward perspective looks looks decent on this. I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't want to buy this sort of significantly higher than it was before. Um, if we just sort of zoom back to where I was talking about it before, it was at a slightly higher level than this. Since then, Nelson Peltz joined in uh, with his activist um, idea of apparently trying to ship the thing off to the States to get it listed at a higher multiple. When it got a jump after that, I sort of gave up on the idea uh, a little bit. That happened pretty much a week after we talked about it, actually. Um, but having come back down again, I now think it's kind of priced for a bunch of problems to be more durable than I think they are. So I'm, yeah, very interested uh, in this particular one. Steve, uh, you described this as a gift off air. Are you uh, are you in the mood to receive gifts? It, it definitely seems like a gift because all what we're really saying here is is that. Um... Well, it's not even just us saying it, um, the CEO saying it as well, but all that's happening is that the acquisition is just taking a little bit longer to bed and uh, Rent-A-Kill have, have geared up for something that um, just hasn't quite happened. And CEO Andy Ransom said, there are plenty of people talking, down, uh, talking the economy down, but we are not seeing that. So I can't point to that. This is a manifestation of execution challenges. This is not market phenomenon. So that to me just seems like, um, well, exactly what you 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 think it would be. Um, it's uh, the rent kill CEO putting his hands up and saying, "Look, we haven't done a very good job of, of um, you know, putting these two uh, th- these two businesses together. Um, we haven't done a very good job of assessing the uh, what the market demand would be in this in this summer. We've perhaps overstaffed, but they've definitely uh, given uh, too much overtime to staff, which is a little bit trickier to just take back off people. Um, but um these are all things that can be can be you know these are all wrongs that can be righted and i would expect them um to do so uh agree with you steve on mr pelts it's the second company in a row that he's just donated some of his money to the market uh, at, uh, and uh, i'm always happy uh, to see that happen um but yeah i was um the the one thing that jumped out at me is that they were quite happy to tell you where things weren't going so well. So they've listed really two lots of problems here that seem to be pretty much the same thing. They've, they've kind of put them under North America organic growth and North America operations. But if you actually read them, it's kind of saying, yeah, we've just really struggled to, to get um, the branch uh, integration uh, uh, over the line. Um, it was also interesting, Steve, to hear that the, the CEO talk, um, he said that... Um, 
essentially issues at the moment at Rendekill are not an issue, uh, not a result, sorry, of market weakness. He said that there's plenty of people talking down the economy, uh, but we're not seeing that, he said on a call uh, with uh, some analysts. So I can't point to that. Uh, this is a manifestation of execution challenges, and it's not a market phenomenon. So what he's saying there essentially is that this, you know, it's, it's a hands up kind of um, thing from the CEO. He's saying, uh, you know, this is a problem um, with with the way that we're integrating these businesses together. But it's not. He's not saying this is a problem that will continue for uh, forever. This. Uh, you know, has potential to be more of a short term issue. So the other thing I was quite interested in, Steve, in is the uh, the right way to plan, which I thought sounded a little bit like Starbucks's two pumps and three squirt strategy. Um, they said that our immediate focus is on the right way to plan to improve revenue growth through increased lead flow, sales conversion, and customer retention. Which I mean, that is the basic one hundred and one of any business uh, to. Uh, uh, to get increased lead flow, get people calling the place, sales conversion, make them buy something, and customer retention, make them buy something else. Uh, it's pretty obvious, really, uh, uh, kind of CEO rubbish there. But the interesting bit was on the, the back end of the statement where he says that they are taking decisive action to mitigate cost overruns uh, as they exit peak season, managing their inventory more effectively, managing technician workloads and overtime, and right-sizing labour resources for the volume opportunity. The great thing about having a UK company with a lot of their um, business uh, over in America, and I don't want to come across all, all Tory here with this statement, Steve, is that you can pretty much sack people whenever you fancy it. And uh, I think that's kind of what Renter Gill are going to do. There's going to be a, 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 a bit of a technician call here, which let's not lie to each other, Steve, would have probably happened anyway because Terminix and, and Rent Skill, uh, Rent Kill, sorry, have um their, their two skill sets that will be will be shared by the staff. The likelihood is when those two companies um merge, there will be there'll be synergies that can be realized. And by synergies we mean uh, less bodies on the ground and some people sharing more of that workload. Um, so yeah, I think to to me, Steve, this does seem like it could be a, a little bit of a gift. I think you've got to kind of you, you're looking down the middle of this. This could be a, a heavy acquisition that took on a lot of debt um, that's not coming to fruition. Or the other side of this is this is just an integration that's taken a little bit longer than um, they initially planned. Big integrations do tend to take a little bit longer to to integrate, uh, especially when they're. Um, you know they're as complex and as as large as as these two are, um. So yeah, I think potentially a gift, Steve. I would um, I'd be you know it's again. I don't think it's something that I would go out and buy, but it's. I think it's definitely interesting to the right people, and it's getting to the right kind of prices, Steve. It's quite off brand in sort of PR terms for for Rent a Kill to be going all all Starbucksy uh, with a a basically fancy name for an idea that says, look, we're going to try and sell more stuff to more people. Um, and here's how we're going to try and do it. Um, I, I heard an interview with their CEO, which was my kind of first reason for getting interested in this. And I actually thought he spoke very clearly. He spoke in sort of language that I could understand of, of look, here's the basic idea of why we go about acquiring the things that we acquire. Uh, we acquire them generally so we can be more dense in an area, which means less time traveling around between uh, locations. And, and you're absolutely right. They've been finding, uh, this is not from the most recent thing, but from one before, that they've got Terminix employees and Rentical employees in the same place driving around on the same routes, which is exactly the kind of thing uh, that you would be hoping to avoid in the process of cost savings. So, yeah, I mean, glass half full says, look, there's lots of room for improvement here, and it should be reasonably easy room for improvement. Glass half empty says they are blundering this and it's not a terribly complicated um theoretically anyway uh, acquisition the, the idea that its size makes it more complicated agree but but at the moment they're getting kind of uh they're running into difficulties that they didn't ought to be um here they mentioned also that they were finding from terminix that customers weren't as sticky as they might have hoped i don't particularly think of pest control as a massively recurring sort of issue uh here maybe uh, if you get into the kind of industrial space a little bit more and things need i don't know annual uh checks and treatments or anything like that but it doesn't strike me as something where you, i think of um certainly not domestic stuff uh, as being particularly sticky i kind of think of it as um find a pest control pe person you like and and in five years find another one uh basically no one's got a well, no one that I'm aware of has a kind of rent-a-kill loyalty card uh, or anything like that where 
your your fifth rat infestation is uh, is free. But um, if there are, they should probably move to a different area. To be honest, because that just makes it more expensive to to live in. I I'm on the side that views this as a gift. Uh, I'll be honest, um, Steve. At this stage, I I think. I'm minded towards giving management the benefit of the doubt here because I think I still view them as competent but struggling with a, a short-term difficulty. Some trading types that I was uh, listening to were saying, if you have what they call duration, um, which basically means a longer-term time horizon than your average trader does, um, this looks like uh, a, a really good opportunity. I think I agree with them. I also don't see this necessarily. Um, maybe it will, maybe it won't, snapping back in the next sort of three months or six months or whatever. Um, earnings are going to be lower than they were last year. That's unlikely to cause a, a big rally in the stock. We will see. But um, uh, I, I, yeah, I, this to my mind looks like a, an attractive long term um, idea that I'm going to see about getting after. The stock moved higher a little bit on Friday, but only in line with the general market, not showing a sign of of undoing its big drop from Thursday, which uh, or Wednesday, sorry, which I view as uh, something of an overreaction to a short term set of admittedly disappointing problems. You've been watching a segment from the Playing FTSE show brought to you in association with our favourite broker, Trading212. For the full version of the show, check us out on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you check us out on the link in description, there's a free share in it for you with Trading212 if you open a new account. Just use the code FTSE so they know we sent you.